I'm Michael Stites, uh, regular at the 1030 service. Good morning, everybody. It's a beautiful day here in um, Blue Bell, Pennsylvania. I hope everyone's doing all right, and I hope everyone's getting through quarantine. And, uh, you know, I hope we're all just hanging in there because we're close. The, we can see the light at the end of the tunnel, so we just got to keep powering through, and uh, hopefully we'll be out of here pretty soon, and we'll be back in the pews, and we'll be back seeing each other, and, you know, everything will be uh, normal again. But, um... I'd like to start out by just talking a little bit about my faith journey before I start to get into, you know, how I've managed my faith through the whole um, COVID-19 crisis. Um, I can pinpoint the start of my faith journey all the way back to, uh, I got to say, when I was around 13 years old. It really started, you know, around then. I remember a specific trip to the St. James School uh, with Helping Hands. My, my mother and I went. Um, with a great group of people from uh, from our church, obviously. I think the trip was led by uh, Ray Hopkins. I remember he, him being there specifically. But, um, uh, it, you know, it. we got to the... Ch I, I was, okay, let me restart. I, I was under the impression that when, uh, upon arrival to the school, I was going to be, you know, helping these kids directly, you know, helping them study, helping them, uh, tutoring them, basically, and, you know, having a direct impact on their lives. But... You know, we still did good work throughout the day, but basically all we ended up doing was raking leaves in the cemetery adjacent to the school. Um, you, you know, while, while it felt nice to clean up the surrounding area, you know, I was sort of left with not, not a weird taste in my mouth per se, but, you know, just not having accomplished what I wanted to go there and accomplish. Um, you know, it, it, what we did was great. Uh, don't get me wrong, but I wasn't making the change that, you know, I really set out to make there. Um, so this is very uncharacteristic of me, but, you know, I took initiative, um, told my mom, Hey, you know, I really wanted to go there and I wanted to help these kids. I wanted to help them study. I wanted to tutor them. You know, I really wanted to make a direct impact on their lives and I wanted to meet them face to face. So, um, what ended up happening was my mom and I started to take trips there, um, not with the church, but, you know, on our own accord. And, you know, we, we reached out to some of the, um, the other volunteers at the, the school and they basically set us up with um, uh, days during the week that we could go down after my school obviously after uh, my school days and we could go down there and you know help these kids with like specific tutoring and study sessions um, and you know one trip turned into two trips and then it just kept snowballing and we just kept going and next thing you know we were getting more and more involved and um, St. James School really began to become a big part of who we are um, it ultimately all came down to an opportunity where this is, this is fantastic. And, you know, this is, um, one of, one of for me, the most, uh, the crowning achievement, the most, um, accomplished I've ever felt, uh, in terms of, you know, making a difference through our church was I was given the opportunity for my, uh, graduate project in, in high school to, uh, run the yearbook club at St. James school. Um, the, uh, a yearbook is not something they typically had in the past, but it's something that's, you know, um, just a staple in my, I mean, you know, it's just one of those things that we don't even think twice about, um, in the school that I attended back in high school, but, um, it's something that they didn't exactly have, you know, the luxury to have. And it was something that we always thought they should have. Um, so my mom and I, uh, ended up doing, uh, I was required 40 hours for, um, my school grad project, but, you know, uh, of course we wanted to do more than that. Um, we had a group of six amazing uh, young girls, and, you know, we ended up working through a very long, tiresome, tedious process of putting together a yearbook for them, and the results were fantastic. Uh, couldn't be more proud of the results. Um, so that, that really, you know, my time at St. James School really encompasses my entire faith journey. Now, of course, over the years, I went on ASP, and I can't begin to talk about how amazing ASP is. Um, that week during my summer, it's always one of my best, it's always the best week of the summer. Um, I have some unbelievable memories that we were able to make on ASP, and all those are memories I'll cherish forever, undoubtedly. Um, and, you know, uh, I'm going to miss ASP dearly. Hopefully, I have the chance to go on it again in the future. But, you know, all, all that time brings us up to where we are now. And here we are all in quarantine and, you know, Dottie proposed a question to me, you know, how have you managed your faith through the COVID-19 crisis? And to be completely honest, I haven't managed it as well as I you know, would have liked to. Um, of course, you know, I'm accustomed with like the Zoom calls because I did the whole online Zoom university thing with my school. 
And I remember attending the first couple, um, you know, Zoom church video conferences, whatever you want to call them. And, uh, you know, they were great. Um, obviously, our church is always going to go above and beyond, and we're going to make the best of any situation. And uh, we can say the same with the Zoom calls. They were great, but they just didn't sit right with me. Because, um, you know, when you go to church, there's it's obviously a different factor. We can all agree that, you know, you go to church, you see everybody, they just make you smile, and you just feel like you're part of the community there. It's not the same feeling from your living room, but, you know, um, what does compare to going to church on a Sunday morning? Nothing does. Um, so, you know, I, I think when all quarantine started, we were getting right up there to Easter. So I remember um, Ash Wednesday, that online, um, that online service, and of course, Easter morning, that online service. Um, so, you know, in terms of managing faith, it, for me, it really just bubbled down to how do you stay positive throughout this crisis where you really just don't know what's ahead and you don't know what's going to happen and you don't know what's in store for you. Um, for me, it, it was all about maintaining relationships at school. Um, me, particularly, I don't do a good job with staying connected with people, especially when I'm, you know, far away from them. Uh, so that was very, very challenging to maintain friendships and you know, maintain those special relationships with people from school. And I really ended up turning to God and relying heavily upon Him and asking Him to really, really just give me the strength to maintain all those amazing relationships that I built up at school. And that's that was very, very tough. And we're still not <laughs> quite, at, you know, at the end. And but um, you know, we're getting very, very close. But I'll keep reiterating that just because I'm an op optimistic person, but. Um, again, very, very challenging to, you know, continue to keep up those relationships because it's certainly not my strong suit when dealing with normal life, when dealing with a normal summer vacation. I struggled with that last year during a normal summer vacation. Now all of a sudden, here we are missing half a semester of the spring semester and all of a sudden, all of summer we're still in quarantine. Now it's looking like we're going to be going back to school late and it's been very challenging, but I've been very fortunate to have a good group of people at school that I've stayed connected to and you know, I, I've really, really looked to God to help me um, maintain and keep up those relationships. And uh, for the most part, I'm very, very happy with how I have. And, um, you know, that's something that I would always take for granted at school. Those amazing people in my life that I have up at Ithaca that I don't have here in my life now. And all of a sudden, here we are five months into quarantine. I haven't seen them for five months and it's getting to be very, very challenging and very tough. But it, again, like I said, it's all about how you... Um, continue to be optimistic and it's always about looking forward and just thinking about better days ahead because of course there are better days ahead and I have move out move in dates uh excuse me for next semester already planned out so you know I can mark the calendar I can start looking forward to those times um but uh you know those relationships are tough because there's only so much you can do over the phone um I, I've tried to you know maintain of course the amount that I've used my phone uh you know, it's always tough in a world where we try to say, especially in recent years, we need to remain unplugged. Now, the only way to maintain relationships is to, you know, <laughs> I'm sorry, my mom's going to see this later and she's going to realize that she almost just walked in on me doing um, doing this video. But, you know, of course, it's all about how you continue to stay connected with people uh, while from home. And we're relying more and more on technology now more than ever. And it's fantastic. But here we are over the years trying to take a step back from technology because we realize that it's, you know, becoming increasingly and increasingly more prominent in our lives and we're becoming more and more heavily reliant on it. And I, for one, have, you know, tried to stay away from the phone, but at, at the same time, you know, you're trying to maintain those relationships. So there's a healthy balance that you need to strike and, you know, it's very, very difficult. But, um, you know, you, you got to keep perspective because how difficult can it really be for us? But um, after all of the years of service that I've seen and I've done, you know, you have to really, really keep your perspective about how we're all dealing with COVID and we have the luxuries that we have. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's all about just remaining positive. And God has really, really helped me remain positive and see the light at the end of the tunnel. And I'm, I'm fortunate for that every single day. Um, to give you a concrete piece, you know, something more, you know, um, concrete just, uh, you know, how you keep your faith and how you practice your faith in a time like this when you can't go to church. I've actually turned to um, music a lot. Uh, music is something that's been a part of my life for years and years and years. Um, started playing drums back well way back in first grade and I played up through middle school and 
I played in the church band. For those of you who know, I played in the Cindy Group band. Um, so mu music, especially on the Christian rock side and Christian pop, um, it's never something I imagined myself getting into, but it's something I got into years and years ago um, after starting to play all those songs like the, within the bands that I've been a part of. Really, really good music, and it's something that a lot of people have yet to discover. Um, it's something that, you know, I try to show my friends, but they're kind of just like, oh, are you crazy? Christian rock? That's weird. But, you know, you get tired of listening to the same old stuff, and all of a sudden during quarantine, I turn back to Christian rock. It's usually something I use, um, you know, you know, when I'm really, really down or really, really sad or going through difficult times, and there's been no more difficult time than this. So I ended up turning back to Christian rock music for a majority of this time, and um, I have to say, it's helped me really, really stay positive, and it's really, really helped me bridge the gap between, you know, quarantine and getting back to normal life. Um, so, you know, that's just a little, you know, to give you something more structural from something, you know, uh, about a practice that I've done uh, that maybe would help you. I've got a great playlist on Spotify. I can share it with anybody. I can link it, you know, all that good stuff. But, um, you know, that's just a little, a little something that um, I, would, I wanted to share with you guys uh, while I had this time with you. Um, yeah, and I wanted to thank you for uh, taking your time out to uh, listen to me today. Um, I've never done something like this. It's actually pretty cool, you know, just to talk to the camera, give yourself a little uh, uh, five minutes to just talk and get everything off uh, off your chest. But no, I've really enjoyed talking to everybody. Um, I hope you guys are all hanging in there. I hope we're all doing all right, and we'll be back in the queues eventually. So take care.